What's up guys? So our next patient we're going to be working on today is this Briggs & Stratton overhead valve engine. Uh, and this has a plastic carburetor. These engines are becoming increasingly common. You'll see these on all kinds of equipment from the cheapest lawnmowers and pressure washers from Home Depot to all the way up to some pretty expensive stuff that can cost over $1,000. Now, I've been getting a lot of these to work on because these plastic carburetors seem to have some recurring issues. Uh, I hear a lot of people complaining about this newer engine because they'll have a lawnmower that's only a year or two old and suddenly they're having issues getting it to run. Um, and it comes from an issue with the carburetor. So I'm going to show you guys how to take care of that and we'll also do some other troubleshooting stuff um, to uh, inspect this lawnmower and get it running like new again. So the first thing we need to do is get our tools. So I've got a lot of tools set out here today. On the left are the things that we're gonna need for sure for this procedure and the stuff on the right here are some extras that'll just kind of make it easier if you have them up at your disposal. So for starters we're gonna need some flathead screwdrivers. We'll need a ratchet. Now I'm gonna be using my impact instead because I have it but you don't have to use that to use this. You'll need a couple sizes sockets. Uh, we have a seven mil millimeter or a nine thirty seconds inch. These are both close enough to the same size that you can use either one. It doesn't make a difference depending on whether you got metric or standard tool sets. And a uh, 5 16 inch socket. We'll need a pair of pliers. We'll need some carburetor cleaner. Some paper towels will make it handy. We need some kind of receptacle to put our fluids in, oil and gas. And most important part, is a micro drill bit set. Now this part you might not have already. Most of you guys probably won't have this. Um, but you can pick these up for very cheap on Amazon. I think I ten, paid $10 for this set. And this has paid for itself probably a dozen times over. We want a nice clean surface to work on uh, because we'll be using carb cleaner and we don't want the, this can damage our the paint on our toolbox. So we don't want to damage that. Tools that will make this easier impact with some impact adapters, a uh, spark plug wrench, some WD-40, some starting fluid, compressed air. This we'll use to clamp down the handlebars. And lastly, a power drill with an impact socket on it. That's going to allow us to basically electric start our lawnmower. So the very first thing we're going to want to do here is check the oil. Um, that way we don't accidentally screw this up and destroy this engine beyond repair if it doesn't have oil in it or if there is another issue. This can also let us know, um, this oil level can also be a symptom of a few different things. So we'll pop this out and it seems to be a little high, but we'll go ahead and clean this off first. Always check at least twice. Put that back in there. Let's see where we're at. So right away we can see our oil level is a little bit high here. Now this can be caused by two things. Most commonly, the previous owner who had this before accidentally overfilled the oil. I find this happens a lot with secondhand mowers, um, so we'll need to correct this. Or it could also be a symptom of another type of issue with our carburetor, but we'll inspect that in a bit. So first thing we need to do is we need to correct that oil level. So that's where our container is going to come in. And all we're going to do is we're just going to tilt this on its side to pour some oil out. And we're just going to catch it in our jar just like this. Hopefully without spilling any like I'm doing here. You can see this oil looks pretty dirty. So I'm probably going to end up changing this oil anyways. And we'll go ahead and recheck the level. Still showing a little bit high because remember we want it to be in between this and this. So we'll take a little bit more out. Hopefully without spilling this time. There we go. Yeah, that oil's not looking the best. So that's a sign that this definitely needs to be changed. And now we're more towards where we want to be. So we're about halfway, a little under halfway actually. So when I fill this back up, I'll drain the oil out and then I'll refill it to right at that top line right there. But we're at a level now where we can start working on this thing. 
So first thing we'll do, we're gonna get this top cover out of the way. We're gonna need our 5 16th socket for that. So I'm gonna use my impact to zap these out. Now there's supposed to be a third bolt right here, but on this used mower, it seems to be missing. So I'm gonna have to replace that. Now we can just lift that up, get it out of the way. And what I always like to do is put those bolts right back where they came from so we don't lose them and we don't lose track of where they came from. Next, what we'll do, we'll go ahead and pop this off, which is the air filter cover. We'll use that 5 16th millimeter bolt again to pop these two bolts out. So we'll get this one here, and then there's one hidden right there. And what I like to do is I like to put these in my air cleaner box so that I know they came from the air cleaner. Now we're going to need that other socket again. I'll use my 9 30 seconds here. But again, that seven millimeter will work fine for this too. We'll zap that one out. And then the other one is down here. We'll zap that out. And again, put those right back in our air cleaner box. Now, this is supposed to have a fuel line going right here. Now this is a mower I got for free off the side of the road actually that had a free sign on it. So it appears the previous homeowner for whatever reason took that off. Uh, but we'll take the gas tank off just like this. It just pops off like that. And then from this angle, if the fuel line was still attached, we would release the clip and just twist it off. So I'm gonna take this and clean this out thoroughly because uh, you can see we've got a lot of sand in here and we definitely don't want that getting inside our fuel system. Now with those out of the way, the carburetor is actually free to pop off. So all we need to do is just wiggle this free. And then we'll, we'll tilt this on its side to release the governor linkage. Just like that. Now our carburetor is free and we can get to work on it. Now there's a retaining ring and an O-ring right here. This white ring, then there's a black ring right behind it. Sometimes these will get stuck right on this intake right here um, so if that happens don't worry just keep track of them pull them off pop them back into place before you put it back on so at this point what i like to do is i like to give everything a good cleaning with the air compressor that's going to one make this easier on me and less gross to work on and two it's going to guarantee that when i start reassembling things we're not getting grit and dirt into places we don't want it to be All right, so now that we've got the carburetor on our workbench, we can get to taking this apart, fixing the issue that it has. So we're gonna need that, uh, what was it? The uh, nine thirty seconds again. So we'll zip these two out on the bottom. Both those screws out. Now, if this part might be full of fuel, um, so if it was full of fuel, I would recommend tilting it upside down over your container to drain out all the gas. That way you don't have gas spilling everywhere. But then we'll use our flathead screwdriver to pry this upwards. Get this to come loose. And now we can see inside the carburetor. So you can see we've got a little bit of junk in there. So most likely the reason that this mower was on the side of the road was probably because of a dirty carburetor. So now we can go ahead and start taking this apart and we'll use our smaller flathead screwdriver to wedge this part out. This is called the cartridge. Uh, and on these newer plastic style carburetors, this part right here is where most of our issues are gonna come from. So we can take this apart a little bit more to inspect the needle valve. Just pry up on that. We've got this out just like this. That's our needle valve. So this is what actually seals inside of here to prevent fuel from overflowing. And if we look closely at that, it's got a little bit of a groove worn into it, but it might still be fine. I'll leave it as is for now. I'll keep an eye on how the mower performs afterwards and we'll see if we need to do anything about that. 
Now we can go ahead and start getting to uh, spraying stuff with carb cleaner. Be careful using this stuff because this stuff will strip the paint off of everything. So I don't want to damage my toolbox. So I'm just going to do this over the cement, just like this. I'm going to spray this off. I'm going to spray this out. I'm going to get inside all three of these ports. Get that all nice and cleaned out. And now we can tackle the cartridge. Now the way to clean this is the same as the others. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the carb cleaner, spray it through, and then we'll spray it back through both of these holes. However, even after doing that, you can see that hole right there is very small. Now this hole is the source of 99% of the problems with this mower. What seems to be the case is that in order to meet EPA regulations, they've tried to make these mowers more and more fuel efficient. For most mowers with the jets inside the carburetor, they could be they could tolerate being made a little bit bigger or they could tolerate being made a little bit smaller. Uh, essentially, you can make the lawnmower run a little bit lean or a little bit more rich. There's pros and cons to both of those, uh, but the big pro to making it ru run more lean or with less fuel, obviously, is that it's more fuel efficient and better for the environment. The problem with that, though, is when we make this hole smaller and smaller to try and make it run more fuel efficiently, it is more prone to getting plugged up, plugged up, clogged up. So what we're gonna do is we are going to widen out this jet just a little bit, um, and that's gonna increase the amount of fuel that's able to flow through here. So this is where our micro drill bit set comes from. The way to find the right size drill bit for this is what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the drill bits and you're gonna find the smallest ones that'll just go in there nice and smoothly without any resistance. So you'll set up your drill bit and you'll stick them through and you'll find what the largest size is that can move smoothly in there. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go exactly one size larger. So the smallest possible size larger is what the drill bit that you're gonna use. Because we don't wanna increase this whole size by very much. We just want to increase it by a very tiny amount. Remember, we can always make it bigger later, but we can't make it smaller again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my micro fine drill bit and I'm going to put it in there and I'm just going to work it back and forth. I'm just going to hand drill it to widen that hole. And we'll know we're finished when we can move that drill bit nice and smoothly through inside of there. So we'll go ahead and get that cleaned up, hit it with our air compressor. Go through all three of these holes. Now to reassemble this with the fuel line or fuel inlet pointed to the left, we're gonna put this back in with this part facing us. So we'll press that back down just like that. We'll get this back into here and get that back installed. Press down on these. And now that's ready to go back together. Or, ooh, it's not quite, because you see how this is really stiff there? So we'll go ahead and pull that back out and we'll make sure we get that cleaned up because that should move nice and smoothly there. There we go, that moves a little better now. Get back installed. And press down just like that. And now this floats up and down nice and smooth. We'll go ahead and clean off the outside of this to make sure we don't introduce any contamination. Then we'll clean out the inside with some carb cleaner. And now we're ready to put this back together. 
So make sure we get this oriented the right way. We need to make sure this box, this little raised box here goes over that. So we want to put it like this. We do not want to put it like this or we'll damage something. So make sure that box is leaving space for that. So put that right back on there. Put our screws back in. Zip them down. And now we're ready to start putting it back together. So make sure we've got our retaining ring and our O-ring in place. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the governor first, and then we'll just press that right onto here, just like that. Now we'll go ahead and take our air filter base. And we'll press this right onto here and attach our breather tube. Starting with the two on the inside. Now we'll need our 5 16 socket and we'll do the two outside screws. Two. We'll clean this off with some compressed air. And same for this. But before we put this on, we need to get our fuel tank back on. So I've attached some extra fuel line I had. We'll start by sliding this right down onto there. And then we'll trim this to the right length to make sure that we can get this on there without any pinching or binding. Attach our fuel line. And now we're ready to put this the rest of the way back together. So before we get the cover back on, I'm going to go ahead and check to make sure this is working properly. So I'm going to add some fuel and then I'll show you guys a neat little trick for doing an electric start. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a clamp here on the handlebar lever to hold that in place, which is going to lift the kill switch off. And then what I can do is I can use my power drill with the socket on the nut right here to spin over the engine without having to sit there and pull the cord over and over and over again. So we'll prime it up and we'll see if it'll start up. Three. Now make sure you're keeping your feet clear of here because there will be a spinning blade down there and we don't want to chop our feet off. So, stick this on. And it shuts off. So, looks like we're in business. So let's go ahead and finish reassembling then. I still need to get one more bolt for the rear here, but we, that should be enough to be able to hold that in place in order to start it by hand. All right, so we are almost finished up with this thing. There's just a couple more things we want to do to make sure that this is in top shape, ready for the next owner to use. Uh, so that they won't have to do any maintenance on this for a long time. First, we're going to change the oil and then we're going to sharpen the blade. So now we're ready to go ahead and drain the oil out. Take our container and we just tilt it. And as you can see, aside from a little bit that I spilled there, 
we pretty much had one mason jar full of oil. We'll go ahead and put this back in for now. And we're going to sharpen our blades and then we'll fill it up with oil after we do that. So to prepare to sharpen our blades, we want to make sure that there's no possible way that this could accidentally start on us. So we're going to disconnect the spark plug boot and get it stuck right over there. Now, if you wanted to be extra safe, you could actually go ahead and remove the spark plug completely. Uh, but we're going to be safe just like this for now. Now we can go ahead and tilt our mower on the side again and we can get at the blades. Now, I'm going to be using my impact again for this because this is going to zip that bolt right out. Uh, but you can still do this with a ratchet and a socket. However, what you might need to do is jam a piece of wood in here uh, in order to keep the blades from spinning as you're doing this. Uh, but this will zap it right out. Just like that. And now you can see we've got our blade right here and we're ready to go ahead and sharpen it up and balance it. So for sharpening and balancing the blade, uh, you're going to need some more tools for this. Um, this is our balancer, which I'll show you guys how to use. This is super cheap. You can get this on Amazon. And I'm going to be using an angle grinder for this, but you can also use a bench grinder. Or if you're really patient, you can even use a hand file. But basically all we're going to do is we're just going to use this to grind down these blades until they're sharp. And then we're going to put it on our balancer to see, to make sure that one side isn't heavier than the other. And now you guys can see we've got a nice edge forming right here. So we'll flip this over in our vise so that we can sharpen the other side. And now in order to balance this, what we're going to do is we're going to take our blade and we're going to center it up on this, making sure that the rings are right uh, in the middle of this and we'll see what happens. So as you can see, this side is tilting down, this side is tilting up. That means the blade is a little bit heavier on that side. Now we want to make sure we get this perfectly balanced because if it's too heavy on one side, that can translate into vibrations in the lawnmower, which can be uncomfortable to use and can also damage things over time. It can cause nuts and bolts to start to work their way loose. So we want to get this as balanced as possible. So the way to balance it is we'll just keep sharpening this side until it comes out even. See if we're there yet. And it looks like we're about perfect now. So I think we're ready to go ahead and reinstall. Now, um, from this angle, the lawnmower is always going to spin in this direction. Uh, from my perspective right now, it's going to spin in the counterclockwise direction. So we need to make sure that the blades are facing in that direction. So we'll put that back on, put our container. Put our bolt in, and then we'll zip it down. Make sure that's on there nice and snug. All right, so the last thing we need to do now is just go ahead and add our oil. So get that out, stick our funnel in, and sometimes this might be easier with this out of the way. And we'll add a little, 
check it. Let's see where we're at. A little too low, so we'll add some more. And it's looking like we're just about where we need to be. So we'll clean that off one more time and recheck that. And it looks like we're right up to that line. So it looks like we're good to go. And with that finished up, I went ahead and found a new bolt to replace the one that was missing right there. So we just got to reconnect the spark plug boot. Prime it up and let's see if she'll start on her own. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, remember to leave me a like and subscribe if this was helpful or if you enjoyed it. And there's more videos to come. Thanks, guys.